I invite you to stand as you are able. We have gathered here together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. in our time. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Samuel, the first chapter. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down, and the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. The word of the Lord. I thanks be to God.
second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. <clears throat> food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. But he who is joined in the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. John chapter 1, right uh, prior to our reading today, that uh, the adult Jesus has gone down to the Jordan River where John was baptizing. And Jesus is baptized by John, and then he calls Andrew and Peter to come and follow him, to be his disciples, uh, and then the story continues here. Let's see what God may be revealing to us, the epiphany of what God would say to each of us this day through this text. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. This time, uh, Josh will bring us a children's message. Josh. Good morning, everybody. So today, our children's message comes right out of the passage that we just read in John chapter 1. It's all about how Jesus asks his disciples to follow him. We read about a guy named Philip, right? And Jesus goes up to Philip and says, follow me. And Philip, Philip is so excited because he's met Jesus, so excited in fact, that he goes to his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel, that's what happens in the story we just read. And he says, 
I met Jesus. I met, I met God, the Son of God, who has come to the world. And Nathaniel said, no, <laughs> there's no way. I, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Really what, what Nathaniel didn't believe was that Jesus was God. He didn't believe that Jesus was who he said he was at the time. And then Philip said, come and see. So Nathaniel, Nathaniel went to Jesus, and he, he has this experience when Jesus talks to him and believes that Jesus is the Son of God. He believes that Jesus is who he says he is. And so does Philip. And I, I want to I wanna focus on one thing this morning, that Jesus wanted Philip and Nathaniel to be his disciples. And he wanted them to follow him. To follow him. And he wants the same thing for each of us. He wants us to know who he is, that he is the Son of God. And he wants us to follow him. He wants us to follow him. And that can look a few different ways. It can look like reading the Bible, right? When we read the Bible, we get to know God and we, we follow Him. And we obey what God says in His Word. Or maybe we even go up to a friend in school that doesn't that we know doesn't know Jesus. And just like Philip did with his friend Nathaniel, we say, Come and see. Like, come get to know Jesus like I do. And follow Jesus with me. We get to do that too when we follow Jesus. And that is something Jesus desires for each of us. For us to follow him and love him. Because he loves us. He loves us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus into the world to save us from our sins. Father, each day when we go to school, when we're with our families, wherever we are, even in church, help us follow Jesus with all that we are. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As you may have noticed and just heard, there is a theme, an overall theme that runs through really uh, at least three of the lessons this morning. Uh, that is the call of God. Uh, how God called little Samuel, the boy who was sleeping there in the temple there to serve the Lord. And how in the psalm, through the psalmist, we hear that God knows us no matter where we are. He's reaching out to us and, and wanting to call us uh, to believe, to follow him. And of course, in this gospel reading from John, uh, the, uh, Jesus calling Philip and Nathaniel to come and follow him. And I think we can learn especially some lessons about uh, discipleship from this gospel lesson, something we hope to really focus on this year. So let's turn our attention again, especially to uh, John's gospel uh, and uh, look for that epiphany. What is what is uh, being revealed to us how is God in Jesus Christ being made manifest to us, being revealed to us that there's an epiphany there that the audience is being shown clearly who this Jesus of Nazareth is, right? It's being shown that he is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior that we've been waiting for. And so, you know, on first reading even, we might see that that uh, one of the epiphanies in that gospel lesson is Philip's confession of faith. Uh, that when Jesus, I mean, when, when Philip goes to find Nathaniel, uh, he says, hey, we have found the one that Moses talks about in the scriptures and the prophets talk about in the Bible. He's come, the one we've been waiting for. So clearly there's a revelation to anyone who's reading John's gospel, a revelation to Nathaniel and we, the readers, and all the readers down through the centuries of Jesus' identity. Uh, 
but even more so, maybe somewhat subtly, uh, is the fact that Jesus omniscience, that's kind of one of the big churchy words for the fact that because he's God, he knows everything, uh, he is aware of what's going on, that G when Jesus says to Nathaniel, hey, I saw you under that fig tree, it signals to us that, that Jesus already knows all of us, all about us, before we even come to know who he is. And in reality that he loves us and he's seeking each and every one of us. And especially it's that, that coming to Nathaniel that Jesus is seeking him out before Nathaniel even knows who he is. And as the scriptures tell us, God knows each and every one of us when we're in our mother's womb, before we're ever born. And he's seeking us out as we live out this life wanting to have a relationship with us, wanting us to follow him, to be one of his disciples. So let's look maybe a little more closely at Philip and Nathaniel with the time we have remaining and see what really uh, may be going on here that, that could be a blessing to us and a teaching for us to apply to our lives. Uh, and so again, as we look at this reading, it says the next day, Jesus, the next day after uh, he had called Andrew and Peter, uh, Jesus decides to go to Galilee, and so he goes up to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. And this authoritative word of Jesus, seeking us out and inviting us, and perhaps even in the case here, commanding us to follow him. Uh, and Philip responds in a positive way uh, and very uh, immediately. And so Jesus calls Philip to follow me, and Philip accepts this call to faith, a call to faith, and then immediately gives us an example of what it means to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ. He models it for us by going and calling his friend Nathaniel to come and see. Come and see this Jesus. I want to introduce you to Jesus. He is the one who is here to save us from all that afflicts us. Everything that this world can hurl against us, whether it's diseases or wars, things that are a result of the fall, or the result of our sin, the result of evil in the world, whatever it is that afflicts us, God in Jesus Christ is here, and he's calling us, wanting to save us and get be in a relationship with us. And so he calls Nathaniel to also follow Jesus. And, and Philip brings this word of faith to Nathaniel. Nathaniel, we have found the promised Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, which Nathaniel would know what that means in that time and place. He is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And how does Nathaniel respond to that message? But Nathaniel is understandably skeptical and prejudiced. Um, now there's a problem we're wrestling with in our country today, right? Prejudice. Uh, Nathaniel can't see any way that Philip's witness is true. After all, Jesus does not seem to match the words given by Moses and the prophets of God's anointed one. Nathaniel has some knowledge of the scriptures. He knows that Micah said that, wait a minute, the Messiah is going to come from Bethlehem, not Nazareth. That little dirty backwater town. I mean, in fact, for some people in their prejudice, anybody that's from that town is spoken of very negatively, pejoratively. Can anything good come in that town? I don't think so. prejudice is underlying what's happening there in his life. And there's something even deeper underlying that that's causing him to doubt, to not embrace this word, to not, not accept the invitation of, to faith in Jesus. The message, the Messiah is here, and he is Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth, has come to Nathaniel from a 
presumably credible and trustworthy witness, his friend Philip, yet Nathaniel has very real doubts about what Philip has told him. That the Messiah could be the son of a poor carpenter from an obscure backwater village goes against all expectations, not to mention human logic and human wisdom. Blinded by these doubts, Nathaniel does not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, before we are too harsh on prejudiced, bigoted, judgmental Nathaniel, because perhaps, perhaps we should ask if we have ever made an evaluation of a stranger based on the place from which they came, or the family from which they came, from based on their credentials, based on their race. Prejudice. Tomorrow is the day that in our country we remember and commemorate Dr. Martin Luther King, June, right? On this Dr. Martin Luther King Memorial Weekend, we may wish to recall the United States in the 1950s and the 60s. Many were asking, can anything good, for example, a word from God, come from an African-American Baptist preacher from the South who seems to have some shady connection. Wow. Let me share with you, again, as you maybe recall, these same scripture readings come up every three years. It's an electionary cycle. It's how we in the Lutheran Christian tradition uh, guide our worship readings from God's sacred word, the Holy Bible. Here's what I said back in 2008. Philip was that, in multiples of three? Uh, what is that, how many years ago? My goodness, 12 years ago? 2008, 2009, excuse me. I said, wow, we are witnessing some incredible events these days. Most spectacular, I suppose, was the landing of that U.S. Airways plane on the Hudson River this past week. Y'all remember that? They made a movie about that. Have you ever been following the news reports? Have you been following the news reports on it? The one, that one died is nothing short of a miracle. That no one died, I'm sorry. That no one died is nothing short of a miracle. Tomorrow, we take time out to remember Dr. Martin Luther King and his great, many, many great contributions to our nations. And then Tuesday, we will witness another portion of Dr. King's dream come true as we inaugurate our country's first African-American president, something some folks within our lifetime would say could never happen, and yet it has. And, and maybe to add a little bit of, to this context-wise, I'm preaching this message in Memphis, Tennessee, the place where Dr. King was assassinated. And so I said, let's remember one of his great speeches from in Washington, right? I say to you today, my friends, that in spite of the difficulties and frustrations of the moment, I still have a dream. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. When we let freedom reign, when we let it reign from every village and every hamlet, from every state and from every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. So here we are 12 years later. And it seems like what? 
our country has moved in the exact opposite direction of what this man of God was trying to share with us and bring with us and proclaim to us as a word from God. The problem is the same and the solution is still the same. The solution to the problem of racism is to recognize there's an even deeper problem. And the deeper problem is the absence of faith in Almighty God, the God who comes to us in Jesus Christ. That's the solution to the problem. The solution is faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, to continue, I would say on the judgment side, on the law side, it is this prejudice, this bias, where we prejudge people. We prejudge people today immediately. No, you don't need to know anybody today, do you? All you need to do is just ask, who'd you vote for? Or what party, political party do you belong to? And the other person is gonna say, okay, I know everything there is about you. People aren't talking to one another anymore. People aren't developing relationships anymore. We're just texting each other and typing to each other on computers, blogging and responding. But God, in Jesus Christ, calls us into relationship, to be in relationship with God and in relationship with one another. That's what discipleship is. The alternative, huh? The invitation to faith in Jesus has come to Nathaniel, and it still comes to us. His question, can anything good come out of Nazareth, reveals not only his doubts, but also Nathaniel's desire for proof. But there is no proof. And that may happen to you and to me when we try to share Jesus Christ with others share God's saving faith with others. They may resist us. They may not even want to listen to us. Christian, white Christian, you have no voice in this culture anymore. You're not allowed to speak because of your privilege. There's only the witness of those who have beheld the glory of the word made flesh. That's all we have. All we have to share is our witness of what we have experienced in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Philip has witnessed Nathaniel what he has seen and heard. How shall Nathaniel respond? Accept the invitation to come and see or trust his own reason, intellect, and experience. One response leads to seeing light and life. One of the major themes of Epiphany, light and life. Alleluia, 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 we're coming. Glory, glory to the one whom light just sent. What a hymn the light of God, Jesus Christ, glory and praise to Him. That's all we've got, is that message. And will people we're visiting with, sharing with, talking with, will they see the life and life of Christ? Or will they see nothing, only darkness and death? The point there is, Notice that what we are invited to do, in fact, what we're called to do from God, is to invite others to come and see. Don't take my word for it. Don't say, I'll consider Christianity based on what you're telling me, Bill. You know, don't say to the other person, you've got to believe me. Can I convince you? Won't you let me convince you? All we need to do is invite. Come and see. It's God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that works saving faith in people. It's not our job. Our job is not to create and sustain faith in the lives of people. We can't do that. Only God can. But what we are called to do is to invite people to come and see. 
Come and see what? Jesus said, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That allusion to Jacob's ladder. God, in communion with his people, through his word, the living word, Jesus Christ, and Jesus as he comes to us through the sacraments and through the written word. Clearly a reference to Jacob's ladder here. Angels descending and ascending as at Bethel. Bethel, Bethel, it means house of God. Won't you come and see? Come to the house of God and see angels, messengers from God ascending and descending. Come and meet Jesus and listen to him. At this place, God is present, present in his son, Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Jesus is the gate of heaven. He is the word made flesh, revealing God's glory. And moreover, Jesus has just said, you will see greater things than these. The, the great thing soon to be seen is God the Father glorifying the Son so that the Son may glorify God. Jesus being lifted up on Golgotha's cross, dying and resurrected from the dead. Jesus knows as he's speaking to Nathaniel, all this is coming. Just come and see. Follow me, Nathaniel. Follow me down this road to the cross of Calvary and my glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday. This crucified and risen Son of God will ascend to heaven and he will send an advocate trumping the powers of darkness and death by empowering the recipient to see, to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing have life in his name. And so as we see in John's gospel, Nathaniel accepts Jesus' invitation. Invitation to come and see, Philip's invitation, excuse me. Nathaniel accepts Philip's invitation to come and see what God is doing in Jesus Christ, who Jesus is. Filled with doubts and questions, he goes to Jesus. As Nathaniel approaches, Jesus sees the obstacles to faith in Nathaniel's life. And so he says, here is, a tr here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. And Nathaniel asks him, where did you get to know me, Jesus? Answers, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. In the presence of the Messiah, Nathaniel's blindness is healed. His doubts are replaced by faith. And with eyes of faith, he sees Jesus for who he really is and confesses, Rabbi. You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus has reached into his life and poured that light of faith within him so that he now sees Jesus for who he is. And Jesus does that still today. Having embraced God's gift of faith in the Word made flesh, Nathaniel's now in the company of those who indeed will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Not only does he see that Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth, is the Messiah, but empowered by the Holy Spirit, Nathaniel will go into the world bearing witness to greater things than these he has seen and heard. He will invite others to look past their own prejudices to come and see. John wants us to know that we invite people to come and see Jesus. We don't convince them. We don't have to convince them. We can't convince them. But we invite them to come and see. And then Jesus, Jesus will speak to them. Jesus will speak into their lives and reveal himself to them. In other words, Christians tell others what they have seen Jesus do in their lives. And Jesus takes it from there. He wants us to tell others what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have experienced. That's what Jesus is doing in my life. Come and see. He'll do it in your life too. And that's what's just so incredibly exciting about the Christian faith is when we pour ourselves into God's word and, and pour God's word into us through our disciplines, daily Bible reading, and our study of the scriptures with others, 
Jesus continually reveals himself to us and strengthens our faith. And we start seeing with eyes of faith. He lights up things all around us, epiphany. And you see him at work, no matter how good or how bad things are going. And right now, maybe how bad things look in our country. The pandemic still taking people's lives and ravaging the whole world. All of the division and ugliness in our country. This incredible racism and prejudice and kind of reverse racism and everything that's going on. We're judging everybody else and, and analyzing everybody else instead of being in dialogue and inviting people to conversation and, and friendship. But when we see Jesus at work, our lives are blessed and there's meaning and purpose there. And that's why I just love being here because it's still happening. The bottom line is this, we are to come, invite people to come and see. And if we invite people to come and see here into this part of Christ's body, what do they see? They see the things that I see that are just so incredible. They see you people responding when there's a hurricane, incredibly bringing in buckets of materials to help with disaster response, to help people restore their lives after hurricanes, bringing in food and clothing and cleaning materials. They see you bringing together offerings repeatedly for Mission Lexington to help people in this community. They see you giving of your time and abilities to be involved in Jesus' ministry in this place, loving and serving God by loving and serving others. There's a death in the congregation and you show up with food and mail cards and phone calls, not letting a pandemic stop you from communicating with each other. It's Jesus. He's at work all around us, and it's incredible. And so, the message, the message for today is simply this, and yes, I guess I could have just said this in 60 seconds and been done, but let's just remind ourselves one more time the message is from Jesus to come to invite others to come and see. Jesus calls you and calls me to be his disciples, to follow him. And in that ministry, center of that ministry is you and I developing relationships, real, caring, loving relationships with others, and invite them to come and see what God is doing in Jesus Christ and the blessed, joyous life that he offers us. So this week, maybe this week, give some real serious thought to what God is doing in your life, ways you see him working in you and in people around you, and then be ready to share that with someone else. Invite someone to come and see what God is doing in Christ and to follow him. That's what we're called to do. May the Holy Spirit add blessings to these words for Jesus' sake.
confess our faith utilizing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was there. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you call us into a life of discipleship as one body in Christ. You invite us to follow you in obedience. Refresh us daily with your word so we may lead others to you. Thank you for the promise of your Holy Spirit to guide and give us spiritual insight into your true nature. May we continue to build up the body of Christ and serve the world in his holy name. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for unity in the church. May our interactions with one another be full of grace and mercy as we continue your holy work in the world. Let us approach each other with humble and gentle hearts so all people may come to know you. Help us to build each other up in love, just as you, just as you have shown us through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Almighty God of wisdom and strength, we pray for our federal, state, local, and world leaders. Supply them with strength, wisdom, and integrity so they seek truth to understand and to resolve differences in peaceful ways. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit and guide us in this life that is filled with so many concerns. We pray especially, dear Lord, for our concern for our country this week for Inauguration Day. We pray that you would keep all safe and that there would be a peaceful transition of power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, Lord, for our country too as we continue to live with the sins of division and prejudice. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry, the work, and the life of Martin Luther King Jr. We ask that you would guide us to love one another that we are all created in the image of God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you at all times and in all ways, seeking healing and restoration. Lord, grant us mercy and sickness that we may feel your presence. We pray today for those who are affected by illness. We pray especially for Larry, Janice, David, Kay, Summer, Betty Lou, Zach, Patty, and those who are suffering from illness that we now name to you in our hearts, Lord. May they be sustained by your promise of everlasting life through our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. We lift up to you, gentle Savior, for all those who are grieving losses in their families and loved ones, for those who are saddened by sudden loss, for those who were taken too soon, for those who we will miss terribly. We pray for the families and loved ones of Lorraine Barnett. We pray for the family and loved ones of Belinda Guerrero and the family and loved ones of Mark Oxner. Hold these dear families in your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace.
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The 
is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Lord.